Okay, so first thing I'm going to talk about is just summarize kind of what we talked about, the nature of salvation and um, what the union with Christ means. So just basically looking at the nature of salvation, nature of union with Christ is very interesting. First thing is that the union with Christ, um, it is first in election. So as you see, God God's redemptive plan for humanity began long before the <clears throat> incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension of his son. Astonishingly, as Paul even talks to us in Ephesians 1.4, God shows us in Christ before the foundation of the world. And kind of in a sense, the saints can be um, comprehended in as in Christ before the, the temporal accomplishment and application of salvation through Christ in space and time. So in a sense, um, our union with Christ first began in election. Next one is our union with Christ in incarnation and kind of just this idea that um, in which God the Son took on flesh and wrought in himself a perfect union of the divine and the human in one person. And kind of just how we talk about the world became the word became flesh and dwelt among us as we see in John 1 14 and kind of just the the great mystery of the incarnation first of that of is that God without ceasing to be God became what he created in order to join to us himself and thus the Son of God entered into human existence to dwell among <coughs> and in us assuming our humanity unto union with himself the next one is union with Christ in actual experience and kind of like the most common thing to union with Christ in scripture is the union that follows both our election in Christ and the union of God and humanity in the incarnation it is the union that occurs when these kind of prior union, unions come to fruition and are subsequently realized and experienced by those who are certainly united to Christ through faith by the power of the spirit and this fellowship kind of is expressed in numerous ways in scripture, as you see many ways in 1 Colossians 1.30. And then the last union is union with Christ and consummation. And uh, yeah, consummation. <clears throat> and kind of just this union is kind of talked about in 1 Corinthians 6.22, which says, We are found in Christ, and yet await his glorious return. Jesus Christ returned to his Father, and yet he says, You and me, and I and you. The church does not await the return of Christ so that we may be united to him rather the church is united to christ and so eagerly awaits the combination of his union and then lastly i'm going to kind of talk about like tying in my union my personal union of christ so just a little bit about my testimony um i was born into a catholic household my mom and dad were catholic and that was something that i just kind of just grew up in just this idea of uh, catholicism and if i had to describe my union with Christ, I would say it was it was not a union because I thought the way that I entered salvation and the way I entered union with Christ was by doing good works. I thought for me to be in union with Christ, I had to do something. And this is something that I thought, this is something that I grew up, growing up with um, in middle school, in um, elementary school, as I went to uh, elementary Catholic school. And this is something that they talked about and drilled in our heads. Yes, we did something to, we, yes, we did something like that we had to accept Jesus Christ as a personal savior. But there was also something where we had to do certain acts to be saved ourselves and kind of just growing up in this idea of um, what this actually meant, not really knowing that my uncle comes and kind of just talks to me about my salvation. And I would say after this, um, after this kind of just like my uncle talking to me, what true salvation means, no, there's nothing you can do because there's no way you can earn your salvation. I would say my union with Christ kind of just like became as we as, as it kind of sees on page 45 of um, Johnson's article just personal and intimate because what I had before wasn't personal wasn't intimate and the, and the personal intimate nature of my union with Christ is often overlooked and obscured as it says here um, but due to due to me finally knowing what it meant to be saved due to me knowing what it actually meant to accept the free gift of salvation my union with Christ became person personal and intimate and this is something that um, I have seen that's very personal. And I feel the one way to, to, as I look at my testimony, look at my life, the one way that my union with Christ grows and my personality and my intimacy with him grows is when I'm in the word daily, when I'm in prayer. Um, because sin and my daily thoughts do not want, are just so sinful and I have to work on that every single day. So yeah, I, I would describe my union with Christ from a testimony as very personal and intimate now 
and it wasn't like that before, but is definitely heading toward that now. So thanks.